Hello everybody. Let's talk radar detectors and specifically uh, what the heck it means when you hear something like a uh, radar detector can detect X-band and K-band and K-A-band. Uh, what the heck does that actually mean? Uh, so we're going to go ahead and talk about that and basically uh, kind of explain, well, what it means. Uh, we're actually going to address this in a couple ways. I'm going to talk about uh, the practical importance of it, like, you know, driving around. Um, if a detector says this or that, you know, how you should respond and what that actually tells you. And I'm also going to give you a little bit of uh, technical background to actually give you some context from the uh, police radar gun side and actually what that means on their end so you actually have a little bit more understanding of really what those letters actually mean in the first place. So what we're going to do is uh, we've got a couple different uh, radar police radar gun antennas set up here. We've got an X-band antenna, we've got a K-band antenna, and we've got a KA-band antenna. Uh, this one actually goes to this unit here. The way a police radar gun works, there's uh, two different styles of police radar guns. You've either got a handheld design where basically you just uh, point the unit at a vehicle, squeeze the trigger, and it gives you the speed. Uh, the other way, uh, which is, you know, a little bit easier if you're actually driving around in the vehicle is to use a dash mount unit. And the way that works, there's three different pieces to that. You've got uh, the control unit here, which is your display, gives you all your information. You've got the remote, which lets you control everything. And then finally, you have the antenna, which actually, you know, transmits the radar signal and then receives the return. So, cool. Uh, with that, what do radar bands even mean? So, um, to give you guys a practical, quick explanation of what that means, if you see a KA band signal that's going to be coming from something like this, it's going to almost always be legitimate. Uh, if you see a K band, it may or may not be, and I'm going to be really, really general here. Uh, if you see an X band one, it's probably going to be a false alert, and for that reason, most people turn it off. X band really isn't in use. And just from looking at the size of these antennas, you can probably start to guess why a KA band antenna is going to be a little more popular than K band, and you know, even more popular than X band, right? Having something compact like this on the dash, uh, it's going to take up less real estate on the dash, it's going to block less of your view looking out the windshield, and having a smaller antenna, uh, it's just, you know, it makes life easier. So uh, a lot of officers prefer KA band for that reason. And a lot of manufacturers now are starting to produce something with smaller antennas. Now, what it means, the word band, like why do they call it X band or K band? Like what the heck is a band? Well, the way that it worked is uh, when radar stuff was originally being created, uh, they realized all this stuff can operate on different frequencies. Kind of like if you're listening to the radio, there's different uh, frequencies, right? You've got like 97.9 FM or 102.7 FM. Like there's different frequencies you can operate on. And uh, because there's so many, they just kind of broke up the entire frequency range into different uh, segments or different bands. And uh, you know, there's like the X band, which is a certain range of frequencies. There's uh, the K band, there's the KA band, and they're just different ranges within all the different frequencies that are available. When police radar guns first started being created, uh, at the time, they happened to make uh, radar guns that transmitted in the X band, and so they were called X band radar guns. Over time, as technology progressed and things evolved, uh, they started moving up to higher frequency systems and uh, using systems that operated within the K-band. And then as you know, things got better, technology got better, things getting smaller, and they started switching over to KA-band, which allowed them to use uh, even smaller antennas. Uh, taking a look at the actual frequencies here, uh, this one actually operates in the 10.5 gigahertz range. We'll call it 10, just for the sake of math. We'll use really simple numbers here. This one operates around 10 gigahertz. This one operates around 24 gigahertz. And these operate between 33 to 36 gigahertz. So we'll call it mid-30s. So 10, 24, mid-30s. X-band, K-band, K-A-band. So that gives you a look at uh, the actual antennas and what would actually be coming down the line. Um, you can see that, you know, the older style antennas like this and uh, something newer, put the antennas side by side, you can see how much of a difference there is uh, in just compactness, you know, K okay. and X-band. So that's all well and good. Now, what does that mean if you actually uh, 
see some of this, you know, like what's actually in use? Uh, well, like I said earlier, you know, a lot of it is going to be a KA band. If you see KA band, it's almost always going to be a legitimate alert. Uh, there are sources of false alerts on KA band, and one of the biggest uh, instigators of this are uh, poorly designed older radar detectors. Um, you'll hear, if you ever hear the term Cobra falsing, uh, some of those detectors can actually leak radar energy that is on the same frequency as uh, KA band, and it'll actually cause other radar detectors to alert to KA band. And so if you see this, most of the time, uh, you're going to be getting a real alert if it's on KA band. If your detector actually allows you to see the actual frequency of the signal, that's one way that you can decipher uh, police radar, which only operates on a couple actual frequencies. Um, even though there's, uh, they can operate within a wide range of the KA band, police radar actually only operates in the real world on real world in just a few actual frequencies. So having the frequency information in addition to just the band actually tells you quite a bit. You can differentiate true alerts from false alerts, that kind of stuff. Um, the frequency information is not as useful for K-band. Um, on K-band, there's a lot of stuff that's going on. You've got uh, not only police radar, you've also got uh, vehicles that have those blind spot monitoring systems. Those also operate on K-band. Uh, not all of them. You know, it depends on the make and model. Some of them will operate on K-band. Some are like 77 gigahertz, that kind of stuff, collision avoidance. Um, but basically, you'll find there's a lot of sources of K-band. You've got uh, those speed signs that you drive past and they tell you, you know, your speed is blank. Um, a lot of those automatic door openers uh, that you see at the grocery store, that kind of stuff, that's actually radar-based as well, which is why it'll trigger your radar detector. Um, it transmits a radar beam and it sees, oh, hey, there's somebody standing here in front of me. I should open the doors. That's also radar-based and a lot of those uh, operate on uh, K-band. Uh, a lot of those also do operate on X-band. Uh, the thing about uh, K-band and X-band, um, there's at this point I'd say more falses on K-band, but uh, K-band is also still being used. Um, X-band, in most parts of the country, there's only a few places where X-band is actually still in use. And that's actually really great for us because we can turn off uh, X-band here and you'll help, you know, it'll deal with uh, a lot of the false alerts. However, if X-band is still in use in your area, probably a good idea to still leave it on. But uh, yeah, so there you go. There's a quick intro at uh, looking over, you know, X-band, K-band, and K-A-band. Uh, oh, let's talk about K-U-band as well. Um, it's not used here in the States, but you'll see uh, Cobra likes to advertise, for example, um, hey, our detectors can detect K-U-band, which has been approved for the United States. Uh, it's not here in, in use yet, but be ready for when it comes. Um, let's talk about what K-U-band is. Uh, KU for police radar, um, it's in the 13 gigahertz range, 13.45, I believe. And so, again, taking a look at these numbers, we're at uh, roughly 10, 24, let's call it 34. Um, so 13 is actually really, really close to X-band. And so what that means is in order to run in the KU band, you're going to have to have a physically large antenna like this. So while it's been approved by the FCC and they said, yes, you can build KU band radar. I know I'm pointing to X, but I'm pretending this is KU. Yes, you could build a KU band antenna. In the real world, there's not really much benefit to do that. Like, why would people who are already making much more compact products that are already working really well move to a much larger antenna design? Like, it doesn't really make sense, right? So... KU band, even though it's been approved as a frequency that they can use, there's really no reason for law enforcement to actually downgrade to KU, we could say. And there's no reason then for the manufacturers to begin producing KU band. And so here in the States, it's really not of any importance in order to be able to detect KU band. Um, the Escort Redline, for example, doesn't even bother giving you the ability to detect KU at all. You know, and it's really not a big deal. Um, some other detectors, like the V1, uh, the Max, they can detect KU. Great if you happen to live in those countries. Um, I don't live in Europe. I don't drive there. I have no idea which countries it's in use. Uh, to the extent that KU is in use, I have no idea. So I can just tell you, since I live here in the States, this is not in use. I don't really pay attention to it. But from just a technical perspective, um, it's going to be very, very similar to uh, X-Band in size and antenna design. And there's really not any benefit or reason to operate KU. So that's a quick word on uh, KU band, but uh, cool, there you go. 
Uh, I feel like I could talk more about it. I want to do another video on uh, going into a little bit more depth on uh, antenna design. There's get a little bit more into like the science and stuff behind it, but just for the sake of this video, we'll keep it pretty simple. Um, I hope that's been helpful. If you guys have any questions, as always, uh, you can leave some comments down below. If you like this kind of stuff, definitely subscribe. We'll be posting more. It's a lot of fun. I love doing this. So subscribe, like, do all the YouTube fun stuff, and I will see you guys next time.